In the previous lesson on finding the n-gram, we looked at some research using optogenetics. And in that lesson, we were looking at the role of the hippocampus and the cortex in storing the memory. Uh, we suspected that there were n-gram cells in both locations and that perhaps uh, consolidation was reorganizing the memory. And we saw that if you train an animal in a context and then they get a shock, so you put them in a, in a certain cage and they get a shock, you will get uh, n-gram cell, cells that are formed in the hippocampus and in the cortex. And then if you then test the animal two days later, you put them in the chamber, but you silence the hippocampal cells, the animal fails to retrieve the memory. And the cortical cells are not activated. So even just the natural cue of being put in back in the uh, chamber is not enough to reactivate these cortical cells. It looks like you need the hippocampus to help the cortical cells get reactivated. But then we saw another study where they went ahead and just directly stimulated those cortical engram cells and the rat did show the memory. So it, it suggested that that perhaps what's happening early on there is a cortical engram, there's the hippocampal engram, and normally, naturally, the hippocampal engram is used to reactivate the cortical engram, but this one is there and it can be stimulated by optogenetic techniques to generate behavior. It's just that under normal conditions that doesn't happen. In this lesson, I want to add a little bit more to that story. Okay, let's look at the red cell and the blue cell. These are cells in the dentate gyrus of the hippocampus. And when you are doing the, uh, uh, the contextual conditioning paradigm in an animal, some of those dentate gyrus cells will respond, but not others. So let's say that the red cell does respond. We put the animal in the chamber and then shock it. The red cell was responding, and the idea then is, is that we're going to get uh, LTP at lots of synapses on that cell. Right? That cell was actively processing the context. On the other hand, the blue cell over here was not uh, turned on by that context. And so if the target cell is not active, we're not going to get any LTP uh, at these synapses. And what this means is then is that the red cell is going to become part of the n-gram for the memory of that, uh, that association, the context with the shock. So we put the animal in, we shock it, and then that's the training. Now, a, a couple days later, we put it back into the chamber. That's the cue. So the context is the cue. The idea is the cue will reactivate this cell. Why? Because those synapses have strengthened. This cell now reactivates, and the animal shows the fear memory. Now, in this research, what they did was they did the normal training, but then they added a drug. So they in injected a drug into the animal, the an anasmycin. So this is a, a classically used compound to block protein synthesis. And you'll recall that late LTP seems to rely on protein synthesis to make long-lasting synaptic changes. Uh, so if you train the animal, this cell did get activated during training, but you simply prevented uh, late LTP at these synapses. Well, now what happened when they, after training, a couple days later, they put the animal back into the context, that's the cue, and now because these synapses were weak, there was no recall. The animal did not show fear. It had amnesia, right? So blocking late LTP impairs recall, but raises the question of whether the cell is still an n-gram cell. After all, it was activated during the training, it's just that it did not enjoy the late LTP at these synapses. Now here's where the optogenetics comes in. They allowed these cells to insert those light-activated proteins. So notice, remember, the synapses are weak here. So they, they trained the animal and then gave the drug that blocks protein synthesis. So here we have the question, is this cell still an engram cell, even though the animal seems to have amnesia, if you just put it back in the chamber? Well, when you shine the blue light on here, what you get is the fear memory, the fear behavior. It's as if we can trigger the, the memory by artificially activating this cell. It's just that the natural contextual cues were not sufficient to activate this cell. So when the n-gram cells were activated by light, the animal showed the fear memory. So the normal contextual cue was insufficient to produce the fear response, but direct stimulation with the light did produce the fear response. So remember then, this, this starts to, to raise some questions about what do we mean by the engram. So this cell was activated during training, but it didn't get the LTP here. So the normal cues can't reactivate it, but if we come along and activate it, we get recall of the fear memory. Hmm.
This led researchers to suggest the following. They hypothesized that an early LTP process defines the population of cells that constitutes the engram, but late LTP is required for contextual cues to retrieve the memory. Thus, the pattern of engram cell connectivity is how a memory is stored, while the long-term synaptic plasticity allows the memory to be retrieved. So in this view then, memories are stored in the pattern of cell connectivity. So some population was activated during the actual training and some subset of those will in a sense be the engram, the storage of the memory. On the other hand, to retrieve the memory, you had to have made long-lasting synaptic changes here. You have to do your LTP, your late LTP. That allows the engram to be retrieved. So again, on, on this view then, uh, it's the pattern of cell connectivity that determines the storage of a mem memory, whereas it's cell-specific synaptic plasticity that makes the memory retrievable.